Just a couple cartoons that I think are visually helpful. So we showed you a sagittal MRI. This is obviously a cartoon, but it's in the axial plane. So what you have here, this is ventral, this is dorsal. So this is the back of the patient. So look at some of the, the normal anatomy here. You have a spinous process. This is a transverse process. In this particular cut, you cannot see the pedicle, but a pedicle would be coming down like this leading into the vertebral body. The reason you can't see the pedicle at this cut is because we're at the level of the foramen, which is where the nerve root comes out. This is the spinal canal, and this is the nerve root exiting. This is a normal, happy, non-compressed nerve root, and this is the compression you get when a herniated disc comes out and pushes into the foramen. That causes radiculopathy. Here is basically the surgical intervention. So a laminectomy involves removal of the spinous process and removal of the lamina. The lamina is the bone that transitions off laterally from the spinous process and covers the fecal sac or the dura. So when you drill that off and carefully remove that, it provides this decompression and gives the nerve roots room to breathe. Sometimes you can also take the disc fragment, so you can reach around the nerve root and take this disc fragment, so you get a 360 degree clean out. Other times, maybe it's too stuck, it's difficult to access, you only do 180 degree clean out, basically like a convertible, but that still gives the nerve room. So with spine surgery, with the exception of scoliosis, which is a different entity somewhat, it's all about neural element decompression. If you decompress the neural elements, patients will feel better. And that's what we're visually showing here. This is a, the same picture that I showed you before, just a slightly different view. So this is a, now a coronal view. This is what you see in the OR. You have the wound open and you're looking straight down into a prone patient that's face down. These are the spinous processes, and this is the end product of a laminectomy surgery where the fecal sac is decompressed. This is the same view. So this here, this is the same view. This is what we're removing, the spinous process and the lamina. I would argue for, in this case, we need to remove a little more. So this edging into the joint. So these are the joints where the different levels are connected we would need to get a little closer out towards the joint to actually decompress these nerve roots. So this would be sort of an inadequate laminectomy, but it's a, at least it's a good visual. All right. I see I have something just popped up that I saw in the chat. Does decompressive surgery lead to instability? And that is the million dollar question. The short answer is yes. We have evolved the structure of our spine for a reason. And if you start drilling off bones and taking ligament, you develop instability. The question is how much can you take in what type of patient and where, what levels can you take without creating instability? So the more you take, the more likely you are to need a fusion. Those x-rays that I talked about, they're very important because they help you to see is there pre-existing instability, which means you definitely need a fusion. Generally speaking, when you start to decompress into the joint, so let's look at this joint here. So I said we need to get more here. The further you get into the joint, the more that you need to consider a fusion because joints create stability. I see another one that says, how do you create the spine cool during procedures? Uh, so the temperature of the spine, it, the spine exists at the normal body temperature. So there's nothing that we do during surgery to heat it up beyond uh, what would be a normal tolerable homeostasis. So temperature management during the surgery is something that's, that's not a concern. Here's another example. This would be a two level laminectomy where the lamina are removed and you can see that basically the canal, the tunnel for these nerves is, is wide open. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.